Hey, it's Scott coming in for you, and I'm playing with a camera that I haven't used in quite a while, my camcorder here. But I found a another restoration rebuild project. It's a 1988 Trek 400T. I think T stands for like touring because it seems to have the a longer chain stay. See that wide gap between the wheel, the tire and the tube there? So it's probably for like touring, which is what I really like to do. That's the kind of riding I like to do the, the most, although I don't have much time in the last few years. But I found this at the Vincent de Paul thrift store one day, and I didn't, I didn't buy it right away. I thought, oh, I'll give someone else a chance. And because I, I kind of balked at the initial price, which was $125. Um, but I decided you know, I, the next day I thought, what are you nuts? So I went by it like right before opening opening of, of, of a Saturday morning and then I did pick it up. So um, it seems to be in really good condition. It probably wasn't written very much originally. See, it has the original, still has like the which I don't know why people do this. They they, they have those dumb reflectors on the on the wheels, but you can kind of see it's you know it's got the usual grunge that's got to be taken off, and that's the first thing I do when I pick up a bike. I'll take it outside and I'll in one piece like this, and I'll scrub it off with like dish detergent, really hot water, and some citrus degreaser, get as much gunk off of it as I can. Uh, before I do the disassembly process, uh, but I've all when I, once I got this bike, I did go to a shop and I did pick up some restoration parts. I want to try these cool pedals. They're like combination pedals. Um, you can either use SPD shoes or just regular shoes. I splurged on these tires. I wanted to get some really good tires. Not just some kind of rim protector tires, and you can see how how much these suckers cost. Um, but I always replace like brake pads, the chain, uh, organization box for when I take stuff apart. I want to keep it clean. Um, I'm going to recycle some parts I had that I used to have on other bikes that I got rid of, like these these fenders and that rack. Um, I have a kickstand and brake. Brake cables, shift cables, and the the, the outer um, what do you call it the sleeves or whatever. So, and I got some bile cages that I'm going to take off another bike. I'll show you. Um, I've kind of had to, I I got too many bikes, but anyway, I got I just set these two bikes up. I'm going to take like for instance the bile cages off of this bike. This is a funny bike. I mean, I I bought this back when I had a lot when I was doing pretty well <laughs> economically. Back in 1998, I bought this bike brand new for like $1,800. And I hardly rode it much because early on I, I figured it wasn't really practical for anything but like racing or, or training for racing. And I never really got into that. Um, I never, I thought of joining like a, a, a club or something. But then I got, I, I discovered like commuting and touring. And a bike like this wasn't really set up for that. Um, you can't really attach a rack to it. It doesn't have dropouts and things like that. Um, but uh, it's an awesome bike. It's like a mint shape. I've always stored it carefully at room temperature in a basement or, or in, a, in my apartment or apartments. So I'd really like to sell this bike. Although, like I said, I am going to take some accessories off of here. Like those bow cages and the seat. That was a really high-end seat. So... So this is like the before video of that Trek bike, that 88 Trek. So um, next time you see it, I'll probably have it in parts. Okay, this is the big reveal of my project. It's, it's going to be a two-part uh, after video. One with all the parts that are permanently attached to the bike, and then one with, with the bike completely uh, set up for maybe like a typical long... Uh, day ride. So here we go. The frame was all touched up by me with some. I had some Krylon Hobby Mile paint that was pretty darn close to the original frame color. Um, 
bar tape turned out pretty good. Like I said, all the bright parts I, I was able to polish. Or usually I would go typically go over uh, these kind of parts with like a quadruple ot steel wool. Anything less fine would have a tendency would have a tendency to scratch. And then I would go have I have some kind of liquid metal polish. Uh, but you can see how nice it looks. These fenders were actually at once upon a time were on another bike that I no longer have. Um, sometimes you have to do some kind of uh, creative uh, engineering to make parts fit. If you look real close, you can see it looks like I have barely enough clearance there, but I do. <laughs> and I'll show you what I had to do. On here, I had to trim this little part off. It was it was like part that would like um, clamp around this bolt or whatever although with with this trek bike it would actually most bikes it would be on on a nut behind here but this has like a a um, hex head kind of recessed um, bolt so I had to do it on the front between the frame and the, the caliper there and it, but it does work um, Shifting shined up that that worked really well uh, this computer I Found this real cheap at Goodwill Sealed in a pouch. It was like I think like two or three dollars. It does work um, It's like a wireless so it has it needs two batteries it has a sensor and Then it has the receiver and I'll, I'll kind of show you You'll see how it how it will uh, pick up there see it's working I still have to calibrate it to the wheel size things like that um, the bar tape didn't wind it absolutely perfect <laughs> in fact, well, a dishonorable mention yeah I had this little part you're supposed to cut this in a, in a certain way so that you wouldn't have something like that but I thought I'm not gonna redo it I just leave it like that rearview mirror I did like I mentioned that it's some kind of a it's not like a regular flat mirror. It's it's more of a of a like a smaller than they appear image mirror. But uh, all in all, this really turned out I think even better than than I hoped. Uh, seat post. This is a stock seat post. It has some gouges that were already in it. Like, but but it looks a lot better. I would like burnish it with like a abrasive I had like abrasive sponge and then kind of polish it a little bit this may or may not be the final height uh, the seat I actually bought for the spike although I had other I have plenty of other seats but I decided to buy this one because it seemed to be the right kind of uh, material and size and I wanted one with a long cutout it's a Trek Botrager brand and it has a little um, mounting for a the tail light which I have I'll show you that at the very end um, things I had to do for this rack I had this rack already and I had to do some creative spacing here because it kind of like otherwise it would have interfered with this part of the frame you can see that I had to shorten the chain or not chains I'm sorry the the stays here I had to cut these short and just use these two attachments I used to have like two others but it didn't really line up ah uh, these pedals like I did find did make these pedal or make them did uh, buy these pedals I thought they're kind of cool because you can use SPD clipping clip shoes or just regular street shoes any kind of street shoes uh, But you can see it looks really nice. I think I think it turned out better than I had imagined. It's just a beautiful bike, I think, and it's kind of to me it's a memorial to uh, American bike making, which doesn't seem to exist much anymore, even for Trek. Because what I can tell you is I've been working at Trek. I worked there almost. I started there at the making of this video almost a couple of years ago. And I first I got there through a temp service and then I got hired permanent and I work in the assembly shop but I do mostly a lot of like quality control and um, checking shifting on all these the, the top uh, 
like one percent of bikes that they do make um, all carbon fiber and all like electronic shifting that kind of those kind of bikes bikes that go for several thousand dollars with custom paint jobs at the project one uh, facility that they have there at Waterloo so I, after this I'm gonna show you I'm gonna take this off the stand I'm gonna put the rest of the accessories on it and I'll show you that real quick right now okay here's my final reveal <laughs> this is what it would look like for it's ready for uh, just a trip in town or a trip across the country it's all ready it's got everything that you would need on a bike like this I basically took this bike from a from a condition that you couldn't trust it to get around the block to you could literally ride this bike any any distance so last things I did show you or add here I did add, have this light I already had this I kind of like the fact that it's this white I've had this for several years but it's kind of nice I it kind of matches everything I, I kind of like I'm kind of like into fashion I kind of like to have things that look like they belong together I did buy these water bottles um, for the spike because I wanted some big water bottles and that's the nice thing about these older steel bikes that they have plenty of room in the frame uh, for big water bottles like that um, this little um, tire pouch or inner tube pouch I had that for a long time and it's an older, an older one that still has the Trek logo I don't think they make that anymore they make like Botrager um, for all their accessories but this is an older one with the Trek logo this seat had that bracket for this flare brand light and I have I actually have a, a bracket on a fender on, on another Trek bike so I can just switch this back and forth if I want or maybe I'll just buy another one <laughs> who knows and this this is kind of like an all-purpose uh, uh, bag it one drawback about this racket I think it has this this little curl up um, part of it of the pan I guess you could call it not crazy about that but this bag I'll probably keep with this bike because of the design of this rack so once again I like to say thank you if you like this kind of content um, please like and subscribe I usually don't say that I usually assume that I don't have to say that but uh, I'm really proud of this bike um, I see the potential in things maybe that other people do I, I wish I could I wish people saw this is my little philosophy at the end I wish I could see the philosophy of, of people too who have potential that uh, um, the way that I look into uh, something like this and I can um, increase the value of it exponentially so with that I'll say goodbye for now and uh, I'm actually probably gonna like leave right away <laughs> after I record this and I'm going to go to a bike shop and get parts, a few parts for my next uh, project. So thank you and uh, hope to see you again here real soon. Bye for now.